Hey, good morning. Welcome. I'm Andy Lee. This is the Bite of Bread. Take two. We're trying this again. Something didn't seem quite right before, so I'm going to start us up again. I hope you're having a good morning. What is today? Today is Thursday. We're almost to Friday. We're almost to the Friday dance. Hey, Dee. Good morning. And Venus, my sister. Good morning. Stephanie, good to see you. Hey, Castle. Here I am. I'm sorry. When I got on the first time, I didn't see anyone coming on, so I thought, oh no, what's wrong? And maybe it was working and I just didn't wait long enough. Do you ever do that? Are you bad about waiting? I'm so bad about waiting. Like, if there's any kind of delay at all, I'm like, ah, oh, it's not working. What is that? We've got to work on that, right? Hey, Carolyn. Good morning, Mary. And Kristen and Linda, so glad you could join me today. Stephanie, okay, y'all hold my hands and we're going to get going. We're going to start digging deep. Hold my hands. Father, thank you so much for your blessings. Thank you for your patience with us. Help us, um, help me be patient and wait on you, Lord. Um, as we talk about you coming back today as we talk about the day of the Lord, as we talk about belonging to the light. I just pray that it will be encouraging to those listening, that we would be strengthened, especially if um, we've just been waiting for a long time and we're tired and weary. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We give you all the glory. And all God's people said, Amen. So, Ellen Casey, I think you came on. Beth Francis, good morning. Kirsten, oh, it's good to have you back with us. We've missed you. So, do you have your coffee? Got my coffee, gals. In fact, I had bulletproof coffee this morning. Yep, the keto stuff. Um, coconut oil and grass-fed butter in it. Anyway, it was interesting. <laughs> we'll see. So let's dig deep into our scriptures this morning. We're talking, we're reading and discussing 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. Hey, Cheryl, good morning. And Kim, good to see you. So 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 is our bite. I hope you've had a chance to go to Words by Andy Lee and get the printable that has the questions and the prompts to help you spend your own time with the Lord. But 1 Thessalonians 5.5, 5, this is what it says. You are all sons and daughters of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Amen, period. That's it. That's the bite for today. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness, but to the light. I want to read verse 4 that's uh, above that. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief in the night. So the whole context of this verse, and really a lot of First Thessalonians, is he's talking about... Um, the day of the Lord, when the when the Lord is going to come back. Hey, Jen Barker, good morning, and Linda Spinks, thanks for joining. So this this book, a lot of the context of of the letter in of First Thessalonians two, the church in Thessalonica was to explain a little bit to them about Jesus coming back. See, they they really thought he was coming back like. Tomorrow, I mean, when he went up into heaven and he said, wait for me, I'm, I'm coming back. They really thought he was coming back in that generation. Hi, Kathy. Good morning. They were very expectant of that. But, of course, they were waiting and waiting and it wasn't happening. And in this particular church, there was a teaching going through the church that those who had died before Christ came back, would not be part of the rapture, would not get to go home with the other believers. And so they were just heartened by that. And so part of this letter, he's trying to explain to them that that's not true, that they will be with them. So that's the context of what's going on in this um, 
in this book. Go with me to, to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. And we'll read that together. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want to be ignorant about those who fall asleep. So he's talking about, in this context, he's talking about those who have passed away, those who have died already, or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe, we trust, that Jesus died and rose again, so we trust, we believe, that God will bring with Jesus though who, those who have fallen asleep, those who have died already um, in Him. According, verse 15, according to the Lord's own word, we tell you, that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Okay, y'all, get ready for the amens and hallelujahs. Listen to this. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Okay, give me an amen. Give me hallelujah. How cool is that? What um, exciting, hopeful verses to hold on to. I'll be honest with you. I have not studied in the end times. I've not studied Revelation. I've read it, but I haven't studied it. Um, and I don't know a lot. I haven't studied about the rapture. And, and I know there's different views on that, whether it's before or after Christ and all that stuff. Um, but I do know what the scripture just said right there. And so I'm going to hold on to that scripture. That is truth that I'm going to hold on. And, and Stephanie says she cannot wait. I know it's going to be so amazing. And I think it's really interesting to read that scripture, understanding what the context of, of that was, why he was writing that. Can I just tell you, all of the letters that Paul wrote to the churches, he was explaining, he was addressing some kind of issue, some kind of question they had, some kind of struggle they had, particular to that church. And it really is important to understand that context and, and look it up as much as you can. And y'all, we live in a world of technology, right? We live in a time when we can Google a question and, and we have study Bibles and we have these study, this study Bible. I love the keyword, just gonna like, you know, put it out there one more time. I love the keyword Bible. And, um, there's every, every book has a context above it. Can you see? There's a little context there about Second Thessalonians, the First Thessalonians, that told me why he wrote what he wrote, why Paul was doing. So that's key. So that was a little side note. Just want to because I don't. I'm, I'm hoping as I teach you guys that I'm also empowering you to do your own study. That, that I'm helping you learn how to dig for yourself. And so always look at that context as much as you can. Get a study Bible. Um, use Google. I'm, even, I'm not afraid of Wikipedia. I think a lot of it's right. Anyway, yeah. And, but I also, you know, make sure my sources are. There's several of them that are saying the same thing. So anyway, just a little... Um, little encouragement about your study and I hope that you are doing that. So anyway, so now we know why Paul is writing um, to them about the day of the Lord. And so this is really interesting. So the day of the Lord, I'm going to read some more from my study Bible um, and the notes here say the day of the Lord holds an important 
place in prophecy. Old Testament prophets declared that it signified judgment for Israel. So, you know, they had this idea that when, when Jesus came back, when the Lord came back a second advent, that it's, it would be a time of judgment, particularly for Israel. And, um, and then um, he says, in the day of the Lord, if the day of the Lord began, well, I'm not going to read all that. The day of the Lord, therefore, is that extended period. This is what this um, author believes. The day of the Lord, therefore, is the extended period of time when God will deal with Israel after the rapture of the church. It will continue through the second advent and the millennial age, which precedes the creation of the new heaven and the new earth. So I think what he's saying is the raptures are going to happen and then there'll be a time of, of judgment, the millennial age, and then Jesus will come back uh, as far as I understand. But I haven't studied all that. Anyway, so that's the day of the Lord, and maybe that gives you something to want to study and learn more about, too. Hey, Lori, good morning. So this is all the context of First Thessalonians 5. Um, and I want us to look into some words. I want us to do some digging here. Lori, did I say hi to you? Anyway, hi, Lori. I'm glad you're with us. First Thessalonians 5. Um, Back to our bite, 5.5 five says, You are all sons and daughters of the light. Everybody say light, right? Um, we're sons and daughters of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. Let me tell you what the word darkness is. The word darkness in the Greek is S-K-O-T-O-S, -O -O skotos, skotos. And darkness is... Literally, it means darkness, um, or it can also imply ignorance or error or, um, or, or it's just the opposite of Christ. So that's what darkness is. The word light, I think, is really cool. So the word light is phos, P-H-O-S. Hello, photosynthesis, you know, so many words we have from that root foes, which means light, but this particular light is light that shines. It's not light that reflects like the moon. That's another word. This is light that shines the light out. And he says, that what, that's what you are. You are foes. You are light that shines out into the darkness and I just think that's so cool because I think the difference between the moon, the moon has the sun that you know reflects off of it, but we're not that. We're, we're like the sun and it shines out of us. Don't you just see and think of Holy Spirit inside of us and it's, he's shining out, out of the darkness so that people can see the light coming out of us. I love it. I think my, I don't have my butter bread with me, but I believe my prompt today was to just close your eyes and picture yourself as that foes, as that light. And what would that look like as you walk into Walmart, which is not my favorite story, even though that's what Venus says. Anyway, um, you walk into, you know, wherever you go in the doctor's office and you're just shining. You go to the gym and you're just shining. What does that look like? What would that look like? I hope that just puts a uh, image in your head as everywhere we go that we shine the light into the darkness everywhere we go. So let's keep on reading. I want to keep on reading um, and in chapter 5 there he says he's talking about the darkness and he's talking about the light and he says so verse 6 so then let us not be like others who are Asleep. So this is a play on words. Paul liked words. 
he liked to talk and he liked to write and he liked words and so here I think you know he's saying don't be like others who are asleep not really dead because before he was talking about the dead people but let us be alert and self-controlled so alert means to be watching hi deafening good morning good morning Kim good to see you um so alert means to be watching so let us be watching let us be looking let us be watching right and self-controlled that word in the in the greek means to be sober so be sober you need to be sober so be alert and sober be watching and be sober for those who sleep sleep at night and those who get drunk get drunk at night he's saying he's not saying never sleep my friends we we've got to sleep right but he's he's just using this play on words to for us to be ready for us to be ready so for those who sleep sleep at night those who get drunk get drunk at night but, verse 8, since we belong to the day, someone to say hallelujah, amen, we do. So those who belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. There we go. we got to put on our armor. Did you know that it's not only in Ephesians 6, but it's also, he talks about it in First. Thessalonians 5 verse 8 we got to put on our armor what is that armor the armor was faith and love as a breastplate so trusting him that love is agape it's agape love it's that selfless love that covenant love that keeps on loving even when it's hard to do that agape so put that on as a breastplate. What does a breastplate protect? What does it protect? When you have a breastplate on, it protects your organs, right? It protects, though, I think of your heart. It protects the heart. And y'all, discouragement kills the heart. And some people here in, in this church they were discouraged. They were discouraged because they didn't think their loved ones were going to get to go to heaven. They were discouraged because they were getting kicked out of the town, out of the church. They were discouraged. And he says, don't be discouraged. Don't focus on this darkness. Focus on the light. Put on that breastplate of trust. Trusting God and trusting his word and trusting what Jesus did and trusting what Jesus said he would do that he's coming back. And then love them. Love the Lord and love each other. Let's keep on going. He says to put on the breastplate of faith and love and um, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. And I know in Ephesians 6 he talks about the helmet. The helmet of salvation. So that hope. Do you know people who doubt their salvation? Doubt, doubt their salvation. Maybe you are somebody. You doubt that you're just not. You just you feel like you're not good enough. Can I just tell you? None of us are good enough. That is why Christ died. He died for us so that we could receive this salvation as a gift. It's a gift. His grace is a gift. And so we got to put that on, just wear that in our mind, over our mind, our thoughts, trusting, never doubting, but trusting that what God, what Jesus did was final. And we have said yes to that. We've confessed. We, we, we said, yes, live in me. And so we walk it out that way and we trust that we are we do belong to God. We do belong to the children of the light. And we are the children of the light. Hi, Sherry. Um, good morning. I'm glad you're with us. So let's keep on reading. It's just great. I love all this. Verse 9. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus. He died for us. That whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing well. We need each other, don't we? We need other shiny people around us to encourage us, 
to speak life into us, to build us up. But also, can I just tell you, and I'm sure you guys already know this, it is such a blessing to be that encourager, to be that person that's building people up, that's speaking life into others. I just want to challenge you today to pray, Lord, Show me who I can build up today. Show me who I can speak life into today. And, and you know, Lord, let anything that comes out of my mouth be something that builds people up, that speaks life into them. Are you living ready? Are you living ready? Are you ready for Jesus to come back? If he were to come back right now, are you ready? Well, if you've said yes to Christ, Yes, my friends, you are ready. Are you living sure? Are you living secure? If you have any doubts, um, ask the Lord to help you. Confess those doubts. Confess that lack of faith and ask him to help you believe in the salvation of all that he's done for you to be saved. Are you, live, are you living, waiting, and expecting for Jesus to come back. I have to tell you, I don't always live that way myself. I mean, we're just doing good to do the day, right? We're just doing good to get the dishes done someday. We're just doing good to get the laundry accomplished some days. But oh, that we would live, if we really lived with the expectancy that Jesus was coming back any minute, how would that change the way we live? How would that change the way we would talk to our neighbors and we would talk to our family and, and the things we, how we would act in this life? How would that change things? I love some of his final instructions in First Thessalonians verse 16. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you. In Christ Jesus. Boy, when we start doing that, we are shiny people. We're going to be really shiny like nothing. The darkness cannot overcome that light. I want to close today with a little bit of Jesus calling. Are you ready? Hi, Lisa. Good morning. And this is August 9th. Yep, we're on August 9th. Wear my robe of righteousness with ease. I custom made it for you to cover you from head to toe. The price I paid for this covering was astronomical, my own blood. You can never purchase such a royal garment, no matter how hard you worked. Sometimes you forget that my righteousness is a gift and you feel ill at ease in your regal robe. I weep when I see you squirming under the velvety fabric as if it were scratchy, sackcloth. I want you to trust me enough to realize your privileged position in my kingdom. Relax in the, in the lux, luxurious folds of your magnificent robe. Keep your eyes on me as you practice walking in this garment of salvation. When your behavior is unfitting for one in my kingdom, do not try to throw off your royal robe. Instead, throw off the unrighteous behavior. Then you will be able to feel at ease in this glorious garment, enjoying the gift I fashioned for you before the foundation of the world. Hey, hold my hands. I'm going to pray us up. Father, we thank you so much for this word today. Lord, help us live expectantly of Jesus coming back. Thank you for the promise that those are loved ones who have gone before us, that they too will be caught up in the heavens with us and, and we will all live with you forever in the glorious new heaven and earth. Thank you for this hope. I pray it's encouraging and I pray Lord, that you will help us shine our light. And if there's any who doubt their salvation, that they would work that out with you today and no longer doubt. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Hi, Hannah. Oh, good, good morning. Good evening where you are. I miss you. Good to see you. Hey, Paula. Good morning. So I just finished up. Go to wordsbyandylee.com. You can read the article about three ways to find your tribe and 
find who you belong to. Um, if you miss this, it'll I'll post it on my timeline and also on YouTube so you can watch the entire teaching. Y'all have a great day. Go out there and be a threat to the enemy as you shine. You shine that light of hope, that shine that light of knowing that Jesus is coming back and sharing that with people around you. Um, tomorrow we're going to be in 1 John 3, 18 through 19 as we finish up our study on belonging. You guys are giving me some songs, so we're going to have some music to dance to tomorrow. Hope you don't miss it. Come dance with us. you got to be here on time, though. I'll see you later. Bye.